It's a, it's a freak show. Look at little, 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 little stupid little jerks. And again, all over the world that are running a country near you. The little pieces of garbage, little pieces of crap. I have a photograph of me picking up Ronald Reagan at the Chicago Hilton. He's 30 years old, 1976. I work with U.S. Marines and the, some of the, the kindest, most generous people on the planet. What do you mean we don't own it? Who the hell are you to say we don't own it? And get that off YouTube. That's America. A-M-E-R-I-K-A. Gerald Salente, how are you, sir? I'm fine, and how are you? <laughs> I'm um, utterly uh, over the moon to make your acquaintance. I I've got the feeling you're a fellow from what, I what I've um, seen of your channel. My my manager, by the way, is like a massive fan of yours. That's how we... Uh, uh, we got in touch and um i can i can see why having watched some of your your you wonderful youtube channel folks there'll be a link below in no particular order gerald what what happened to the american dream it's gone um the you look at the country what it looks like what the people look like um i mean it wouldn't it be beautiful if they ripped down all of rome or all of paris or all of prague and put up ugly skyscrapers made of steel and glass. I mean, why don't you just knock down all the old beauty and put up some ugly crap? And that's what America's become, ugly crap. Is the people, what is it, 42% obesity rate? People dress like slobs. There's no mm -hmm. style. It's all gone. The American dream is dead. And um, it, it's it's very sad. And I watch it in front of me. And again, I'm a lucky guy. I grew up you know, I'm, I'm born in 1946 in the Bronx and um, I'm at the height, it's the height of America. You know, the, the war ends in, in 45. And, and so the energy is just so spectacular. And it was like that for a lot of years. And now it's a, it's a, it's a freak show. Look at little, 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 little stupid little jerks. And again, all over the world that are running a country near you. The little pieces of garbage, little pieces of crap. And people bowing down, sucking up and taking orders from them. Yes, I've had the pleasure of being in New York. I think it was in the 90s. Had dinner twice on uh, Windows on the World in oh, yeah. top of the Trade Center. Just, yep. I love Americans. I'm always, yep. um, you know, I've worked, uh, with, I've worked with US Marines and the kindest, most generous people on the planet. And, and you've also got this wonderful thing called a constitution. We, no, we've there is no constitution. There's no constitution. There's no Bill of Rights. It's gone at every level. Censorship. What freedom of speech? Who the hell are you? Who the hell are you to think for yourself? I'm the government. I'm some little piece of scumbag mayor, governor, senator, congressman. I'll tell you what to do. Shut your damn mouth and get that off YouTube. That's America. A-M-E-R-I-K-A. -E the bigs have taken over everything. Everything. When I was a young guy, they had things called grocery stores, hardware stores, stationary stores, drug stores. They're all chains now. Drug chains, hardware chains, grocery chains. All the mom and pop businesses gone. Gone. The bigs have taken over everything. It's the merger of state and corporate powers that Mussolini calls fascism. That's not my definition. The fascists, top fascist guy of the 20th century, that's his definition. Hey, I'm a big company. Give me a tax break. Give me grants. Give me money. I'm going to create jobs. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Look at you. The, you have the presidential races, you know, all the midterm elections. You got little shithead clowns running for a governor, this guy, Beto O'Rourke, a little piece of shit. 
another moronic Abrams up down in Georgia, the other guys from Texas, a hundred million dollars. They both spent a hundred million dollars to lose an election. A hundred million dollars. What are you kidding me? America, the country that goes around the world, slaughters millions of people in the name of bringing freedom and democracy. How about France? That little shithead, Macron, little boy was fake hair, probably a penis smaller than my finger. You gave him the finger, five people got arrested, fined 15,000 euros for giving him the finger and are facing a year in jail. Mm. We're bringing freedom and democracy around the world. This yeah, is the uh, this is this is the sad thing, isn't it? Um, I'm mean, going to up, upset you even further now. And um, what about the uh, the great orange hope? I'm talking about the uh, President Trump. Again, it's it's a, it's it's a waste of time. You know, again, you know, I'm a political atheist. I, by the way, just briefly, at a graduate school, I was one of the top guys running a mayoral campaign in Yonkers, New York, a city of over 200,000 people. Then I got involved in campaigns in Westchester County, which is the richest county at the time in America. And they were grooming me. I was the assistant to the secretary of the New York State Senate. This is the guy that runs the whole show at 26 years old. I quit after one year. It was the worst job I've had in my life, and I've been working all my life. To watch grown men grovel to suck the way up to the top ate my trip. But I've been on the other side. I have a photograph of me picking up Ronald Reagan at the Chicago Hilton. I was 30 years old, 1976. We put on a brunch for him and 16 of our board of directors two days before he's announcing he's running for president. And we we're presidents, prime ministers, and princes. I know the other side. The people that are running, the people that are in politics are the shitheads I hated in high school and college that wanted to be class president ahead of the student council. They haven't grown up, and we're still in high school. Do you do you think they're all controlled, Gerald? No, no. They get they're controlled by the people who give them money. Yeah, that's that's who controls them. They'll do anything. You can buy them out really cheap because they never work a day in their life, so they get bought out really cheap. So going back to Trump, we were the first magazine. The Trends Journal magazine back in 2016, May, when all the polls showed he had no shot, we said this guy's going to win. You know, so I, it's not like I, I like Trump, hate Trump. I can't stand the guy. It, but I look at the facts for what they are. And right now, the people have had enough of him. Yeah, he has his core base of people that love him, but the young people want no part of him. They don't want no part of Biden. You know, so this is just noise. It's noise. And again, you know, what's not being talked about, when you mentioned it, oh, he these, took these papers, these uh, military, about, about the United States. Oh, the United States was going to launch an attack against Iran in the papers that he has? The United States was going to go to war against Iran? What has Iran done to us? Mm. Didn't That's he, not even talked about. Didn't he take, was it Soleimani out? As, That's right. What, yeah. And he was on a uh, on a peace mission to Iraq at the time. That's right. Yeah. They're murderers and thieves. They're, by their deeds you shall know them. Look at that little arrogant piece of scum they call the Nobel Peace Prize winner, the Nobel Peace of Crap Prize winner, Barack Obama. Wasn't as precise as it should have been, and there's no doubt that uh, civilians were killed that shouldn't have been. I want that guy Assad out of there. Gaddafi has to go. Quoted in the book, Double Down, I'm really good at killing people. Yeah. Yeah. The no, oh, I love Obama. The people are dopes. Again, you ask me what America is, no fight in this country. Gerald, let, let me ask you on a, a you know, you, you're you clearly a devoted man, and uh, I, I tip my, uh, my, my hat to you. How we, can I use the term waking up, you know, when, when did you start to see through all this facade? I was about, um, that's when I became a trend forecaster. I was the number two guy running a major trade association, mm -hmm. again, at 30 years old. And I was also a chief government affairs specialist for the chemical industry. I was killing environmental legislation at the height of the environmental movement.
in the 1970s. All I wanted to do was to make money and have a good time. I started to grow up when I was about 32 years old. At 28, I'm staying at the Willard Hotel in D.C. and putting my meetings on at the Hay Adams, the top place. So what happened was the Iranian conflict starts heating up. And I've always loved to read history. And, you know, I knew about how America overthrew the democratically elected government of uh, Mossadegh in 1953, along with the MI6 and the CIA. CIA top guy was Kermit Roosevelt, Theodore Roosevelt's grandson. And you could, it didn't, it came out finally in 2017. None of the American papers reported it. The only one was the Financial Times. Exchanges between Churchill and the CIA that we have to get rid of Mossadegh because we need that oil. So there were companies by the name of Anglo Iranian Oil, better known today as BP, and Standard Oil, better known today as ExxonMobil. So they took over. They owned all the oil of Iran. Mosaddegh gets elected. He says, no, you don't own the oil. We own the oil. It's not your oil. It's our oil. I'm nationalizing the oil. You don't own it. Mm. What do you mean we don't own it? Who the hell are you to say we don't own it? We're racketeers. We're murderers. We'll steal anything we can. Oh, you like what happened in South America with the... Uh, with the, oh, remember those days when we they needed all that fruit, so they destroyed all those countries? Yeah. The United Fruit and all the others. Again, that great book, Wars a Racket by Smedley Butler, mm -hmm. most decorated Marine in history. He writes about that. But going back. So now this thing is breaking out, right? I became a political atheist. I'll never forget the day. Jimmy Carter, another arrogant little piece of crap. Let it loud interstate banking, did away with the usury laws. Yeah, that Carter, the Carter that gave us Al Qaeda under the name of Mujahideen because we had to get those Russians out of Afghanistan. Yeah, that Carter. Mm. He comes back after spending New Year's Day, New Year's Eve with the Shah and his wife. He and his Rosalind and Carter went to Iran. And back in those days, it was a big deal when the president came back overseas, the helicopter, the little guys dressed up in their military drag, saluting, oh, he's the president. Yeah, and he gets to the microphones and he says, you know, over and we had a wonderful time with the Shah and his wife. And the Shah is the island of stability in the Middle East. That was his quote. And in the Bronx, we used to say bullshit has its own sound. I'm watching millions of people taken to the streets. I said, this thing's going down. So that's when I became a political atheist and I started betting on gold. I had a $5,000 bet. This is in the 70s. And I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I'm a young guy. And I'm I'm playing the futures market. I put a $5,000 bet almost into three quarters of a million dollars playing gold and oil futures because I knew both prices would go up as this thing kept escalating. Mm -hmm. And what people also don't know is that the reason it became you got the militant end of the religious sector taking over is because the United States keep fighting them. So when the United States gets involved in these these internal disputes, they become radicalized when the outside countries get involved with them. So that's why I became radicalized. If they had just overthrew the Shah, call it a day, mind your own damn business and get out of here, it would have been a different country. But anyway, that's how I got into trend forecast. Mm -hmm. And again, that's when I became a political atheist. I just all bullshit to me. Gerald, I'm conscious of the the uh, the time. So I've got two more questions, if I may. Um, What's the answer to all of this? this it, it, number one answer. Number one answer. Everybody has to get in the best shape they can. Physically, emotionally, and spiritually. If you're not in the best shape you can to fight at all those levels, you're not going anywhere. And that's America, by the way. There's no fight. There's no fight. You know, I just had a big rally up here uh, on May 27. Dennis Kucinich, who's RFK Jr.'s national campaign manager was one of my speakers. We had thousands of people out here. I own three of the most historic buildings in America, the only four corners with pre-revolutionary war stone buildings. I own three of them, the others a museum. And I bought them because what they represent, the seeds of democracy was sown here. We have a big garden behind the 1750 Franz Rogan house. And we have, you know, 
people are packing the place up. I'm walking over there. It doesn't start till one o'clock, about a quarter to 12. And a guy's screaming outside, Salenti's nothing more than a Putin puppet. Salenti's your... I go running out, down the thing. And I start yelling at the guy. I said, don't you... And I use the proper situational language. Don't you call me that, you little bastard. And I'm yelling at the top of my lungs. A little coward runs away. He says, come over here and talk to me like that. Come over here and talk to me like that. Mm-hmm. Now, run away. Ran away. They run away. What 76-year-old guy would call out a 35-year-old, 30-year-old guy? So it's not bullshit. Again, I'm a man. I grew up a Napolitano from the Bronx. You learn how to fight. You don't tell anybody what to do and nobody tells you what to do. How dare you say nobody should tell you what to do? I honor the politicians. Roll out the red carpet for them. A red carpet? These little clowns all... These little boys and girls and all this shit and saluting. What's this red carpet crap? Yes. Anyone that stands up for peace gets called a Putin apologist. Don't yeah. They? <laughs> Final question, uh, Gerald. It's been an absolute honor to meet you, sir. It really, really has. Um, could you give us an idea? Who, who have you found interesting on, on your podcast to, to talk to? Or who, who, who have you been really proud to chat to? Oh, I have so many, but you know, one of my, I do one every Wednesday with judge Andrew Napolitano and this guy was a former Supreme court judge in New Jersey. And he, there's nobody that knows the constitution and, and the uh, bill of rights like he does. Mm. And it's, it's very, again, you ask me what happened to the country. It's gone. The middle class is the middle class has shrunk 11% since the 1970s. It, it, it's it, it, people can't afford to buy a home anymore. Back in 1984, when I left, I was living in Chicago at the time, and I moved back to New York. I moved to a place called Rhinebeck. I, I became a recluse, by the way, when I started, learned, started to learn trend forecasting. It was freaking me out when I looked at the future. And I was married at the time. And Rhinebeck is where Chelsea Clinton, Hillary Clinton's daughter, got married. Mm-hmm. It became like one of the Hamptons of the North, they called it. It's beautiful. And when I was there, it was all artists because artists find the best places first. And they all had a lead when the rich people found it. But, you know, going back in 1984, I bought 38 acres of land. Remember, this is where Hillary Clinton's daughter got married. It's one of the 38 acres of land. An old house. They had to redo the whole thing, but it was about an 1850s house. $28,000. $28,000. Wow. Now the average price of a house in America, these ugly pieces of crap, almost $400,000. Mm. Who could afford that? Yeah. You can't retire on a million dollars. You can't retire on a million dollars. Look what happened with the COVID war when they launched the COVID war. Billionaires got $27 trillion richer in two years, according to Oxfam. $27 trillion. And they don't give a penny for peace. None of them. None of them. None of them. I launched Occupy Peace. It's the regular people that give donations. We only can do so much. You put on these rallies, you go forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 when I put these things on. They don't give a penny for peace. Mm-hmm. Peace is not, there's, you're not allowed to talk about peace in the media. I used to be on Oprah, the Today Show, Good Morning America, everybody. But banned. Banned. You only could talk about war. And at the taxpayer's expense, which is the uh, the sad irony of it. Yep. And then on the economic front, this is very important. You're going to see an office building bust, the likes we've never seen in the, in the history of the world, uh, since office buildings have been built, I should say. Because... A lot of people aren't going back to work. They're working from home. And you're looking at the vacancy rate, meaning vacant buildings, 20% in New York City. 20% of the buildings are vacant. San Francisco, 30% are vacant. Mm. Los Angeles, 30% are vacant. Montreal, they're looking now 25% vacant. Occupancy rate, meaning how many people are going back to work, according to the latest data, 49.6%. 
So all the businesses that depended on commuters are going out of business. All these people, at all these big firms that own all these big office buildings. How am I going to pay my, my loan? I, I'm losing my tenants. If you have people working at home, I don't need 10 floors anymore. Give me two. And the banks are not going to be able to cover the losses. So we're going to see a financial crisis, the likes of which we've never seen before. And no one's talking about it. We've been talking about it for three years when people started working remotely. Because then they're staying at home. They're forced to stay at home month after month after month after month. And they're saying to themselves, holy Christ, I'm getting up at five o'clock in the morning to, to commute an hour and a half each way. I'm not going to do that anymore. I could work from home. So this is a reality. Mm. And they're not talking about it because that's how bad it is. And so to me, gold is going to be, and, I, and there, you see the magazine, the Trends Journal, there are no advertisers in it, so nobody tells us what to do. To me, when they start lowering interest rates in the United States, you're going to see the dollar decline very rapidly. It's going to be the beginning of the end of the dollar. And the weaker the dollar gets, the higher gold prices go because gold is dollar based. So if the dollar is strong, of course, other countries' currencies are lower, of course, the more money to buy gold. When the dollar goes down, it's cheaper to buy gold from everybody. And the central banks in the first quarter of this year bought more gold than the first quarter of last year by 155%. So the central banks are buying the stuff up because they know how bad it is. Could you explain to people BlackRock and Vanguard the significance of two companies pretty much with the biggest dibs on the shares on the planet yeah i mean again it's it's a crime syndicate what do, what do you i mean they're trillions of dollars mm. the whole game is rigged here one percent of 332 million people own 54 percent of the equity market of in america one percent 54 percent ten percent own 90 percent so that means the other 90 percent own 10 percent in their 401ks they own nothing nothing it's mm. totally the country is totally controlled by the pigs as i said there's no stores anymore they're all chains and all we are plantation workers of slave landy a chain to them this is better than the plantation system yeah is this enough money here yeah. Get, go to work at Walmart, go to work at Target, go to work over here, go to work at Home Depot, shut your mouth, come back tomorrow, go home. I, at a plantation, you used to have to house them and feed them. Now you just give them enough money so they can barely make it. You don't have to house them and feed them, but you got them working for basically nothing. Mm -hmm. Because you're going back to the vanguards and the Black Rocks and the Black Stones, buying up all the houses, the Black Stones. Again, Following the panic of 08, what they did when they had, they made, created this, this uh, fake market with these uh, subprime mortgages, you don't have a job, you don't have any money, you're deep in debt, don't worry about it. Here, you could buy a house, sign over here, that one. And then when everything crashed, all of a sudden they're buying up, they're buying up all the homes. That never happened before. Hmm. So now they're renting them out because people can't afford them. So now you have all these big companies buying up all the homes. They were buying like 25% in the, in the last uh, splurge. That didn't happen before. That did not happen in my life. And you talked about the vanguards, the Black Rocks, the private equity groups, the hedge funds, the venture capitalists. When I was a young man, none of that existed. And what about the uh, the digital currency and identities? Is, what, what can we do about that? Again, what, what we can do about it, you got to fight about it. And they're going to do it. They, they're going to, they, because they, they, all of these countries that pumped in all these countless trillions of dollars backed by nothing and printed on nothing to fight the COVID war and they near zero and negative interest rate policy always caused inflation and caused all this debt bubble. So now what they're going to do is they're going to make something up. The Russians hacked our banking system. You lost your money, but don't worry about it. We have a new digital currency for you. Mm -hmm. And by the way, go to India. It will have a, People, everybody paying with their phone. Everything paid with the phone. They're all going to go digital. This way they know every penny you spent, where you spent it, what you spent it on, so you get their tax money. End of the, end of the story. For people watching that might be unfamiliar with, with these you know, scenarios, why would it be a bad thing, Gerald? 
why would it be a bad thing uh, if if everything went digital? Uh, because then they know your whole damn life. And I don't want to give them all the money. Again, it goes back to these politicians. They never mm. work a day in their lives. Like the little bureaucrats. Remember all these health ministers and health directors during COVID? These little pieces of shit telling you what to do. They want their money. These bureaucrats are people that can't get a job in the real world and suck into the political system. That's all they want to do is to create a bigger government. And the only way they could do that is by stealing all your money in the name of taxes. So when you go digital, again, they know every penny you spent, where you spent it, what you spent it on, so they could get your tax money. End of story. And this chat GPT, is it, to me, it just seems like a, version of google it's there's no intelligence there it's just giving you set uh, you know stock answers um can do you know anything about of course we do yeah but again it's it's part of the whole digital world you like mm -hmm. the music that's all synthesized once upon a time people used to play instruments i mean the whole thing everything is synth it's 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 they got it wrong in the king's james bible it says the meek shall inherit the earth they spelt it wrong. The geeks have inherited the earth. Look at the little clowns. Look what they look like. Look what they look like. Mm. So no, it's artificial intelligence, artificial flavors, artificial colors, artificial everything. It's an artificial world. And, you know, it, it's just going to keep going in that direction. People are all addicted to their phones, to their, I mean, I don't own a cell phone. I did work for the cell. We did. Major study for the cellular telecommunications industry back in the 19, about 1994, when they had these boxes in the, in the trunks of cars with aerials. I've been studying it since. I know how deadly these things are. And you don't have to believe me. Look at the data coming out of the University of California at Berkeley. If you're on a phone for 17 minutes a day for 10 years, your chances of getting a brain tumor only increased by 60%. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's one thing after another. So anyway, it, it, it's it's the world. So now kids are going to be doing more chat. It's going to give them that artificial intelligence. And that's what we've got. It's an artificial world, artificial fl flavors, artificial colors, artificial everything. It's, it's again, the geeks have inherited the yeah. earth. Gerald, with your insight and and the the the, the players that you that you've met over the years, what what what's the thing with the children and 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 the Epstein Island and uh, are they just living out their monster fantasies because that there's nobody to put them in in check or what? What do you? How about the wars? How about, how about a little Georgie Bush, a little daddy's boy, a little piece of shit? An arrogant, moronic little clown. We're going to get that guy Osama bin Laden dead or alive. Saddam Hussein has weapons of mass destruction and ties to Al-Qaeda. No, he doesn't. Here's the proof. One of my speakers at one of my rallies, Phil Giraldi, top CIA guy, top CIA guy, went into Bush's office. Mr. President, here's all the data. There are no weapons of mass destruction. You know what Bush told Giraldi? Top CIA guy. Leave the office. You know, if hmm. Giraldi did, he quit. So how about the murderers? How many people did he murder? <laughs> well, we spent $8 trillion to murder well over a million people in two countries. Hmm. So again, it's Epstein. I mean, come on. They're murderers and thieves at every level. So I want hmm. to thank you for having me on. I <laughs> very much appreciate it. And thank you for all that you do. Joe, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, thank you so much for coming on the show. Friends at home, Gerald is the number one trends foreca forecaster on the planet. And did you hear what he said? He said, you've got to get fit, but you got to get spiritual. Yep. Much and love again, to you. Our magazine, of course, is the Trends Journal. This is an issue from 2014. It's the overthrow, the United States coup, of the democratically elected government of Viktor Yanukovych in Ukraine. All the details are here. We give you history before it happens. There's no magazine in the world like it that gives you in-depth socioeconomic and geopolitical trends analysis and trend forecasts. We tell you what's going on, 
what it means, what's next, and what you might want to do. And the motto of the magazine is think for yourself. So we don't tell you what to do. We'll put all the links below, Gerald, and for your books as well, and for your YouTube channel, folks. Get over and check Gerald out. Much, much love to you, sir, and 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 um, you and yours, and uh, let's chat again. Okay, thanks so much for all that you do. Absolutely, my pleasure. Thank you.